Hey guys, I'm back. Yes, Essen is done and dusted for another year. I am still exhausted from it. I got back on Monday morning after getting an overnight ferry back on Sunday and then driving through rush hour traffic past London in order to get all the way back to Portsmouth just in time to basically unpack a ton of stuff. I mean, the amount of games I brought back was insane. I'm not even sure if this is the largest load I have done before, but oh my god. You know, there was a lot of games that I either bought, got discounted for reviews, or got free for reviews. It varied among publisher and publisher. I made the mistake of not emailing people ahead of time. Really should have done that. But, oh well, take take note for self for next time, you know, for the UK Games Expo and Essen next year. But I was busy with my Devon holiday and then work was like, you know, taking a lot of my time. And then by the time it got there, it's like, you know what, it's a bit late. I'll just go to Essen as normal. But yeah, normally you should email these people ahead of time. Oh well, you know, <laughs> live and learn. But yeah, it was a great event. And I always say when it comes to Essen, games come second. Heresy! They do. They, they come second because most of the time I look at Tabletop Together's tool and various other means and I look at the games in the list and I just go, don't care, don't care, don't care, seen it, seen it, cash grab, whatever. And you know, and there's a lot of games on that list that I put as ignore. You know, boring box cover, boring title, boring theme, seen it before, sequel to another game we've seen before, you know, that kind of thing. And a lot of the times I will just gloss over them and say ignore. But then I'll separate about 50 to 75 games and I'll take a look at those. But, you know, a lot of the times when I get there, you know, it's usually taking me a couple of days to get through the important stuff I want to do. This year, I got through 90% of the important stuff I wanted to do in the first day. You know, I'd gone around and bought everything I was going to mainly buy. And then Friday and Saturday was mostly the occasional Kickstarter pickup, uh, a demo here and there, and a meeting with the occasional publisher. But, you know, they were sporadic. You know, they weren't like, oh yeah, must do this, must do this. Pretty much most of my important stuff was done on the Thursday. So by the time I got to late Saturday and kind of early, like Sunday time, I was kind of done. Well, not to say that like, I was bored or anything. No, 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 no. You know, you... Hit mis you know, misinterpret but the idea was was that in terms of games I was kind of done you know I'd played what I was going to play I'd seen what I was going to see you know and anything else was just a bonus what Essen is all about though is the people it always is about the people I get to see so many bloggers so many youtubers so many celebrities so many people who I know from the industry that I don't get to see at any other time I don't see them at the games expo some of them some of them I do but again it's rare and then others I might barely see them at other conventions you know and they could be publishers they could be designers they could just be friends I know you know the dice tower lot are there and I help out on their booth as normal. I see Sam and occasionally Z and Tom, you know, do like UK Games Expo. Don't often see Eric, and I pretty much never see like the rest of the Dice Tower contributors that can turn up. I mean, I don't see Mandy and Suzanne that often. I don't see Kenny. I don't see like uh, uh, Yuli, his name is uh, uh, Dave Loser and Matthew Jude. I don't see them as often. And it's just good that everybody just comes together in this one location to play games and as I say the tabletop together lot were there uh board game ramblings you know um I know the guy you know I know the guy from blogging quite well in his YouTube channel we know and he's a good he's a good buddy you know from Norway so and there's a lot of other people that I just go oh yes I get to see them it's great well <clears throat> and that was kind of the thing I mean even though I was kind of done with games I wasn't done with the people you know, I would have stayed another four days if it just meant I could have hung around with a lot of people. A lot of these board gaming related personnel that I just adore or get on well with or just like to hang out with. You know, whether it's for drinks, for games, whatever, even just chit chat. And of course, you guys. Wow. Okay, I mean, this this is a pokey little blog with just me talking about games. And each year, especially around Essen, I see more and more an increase in like reception among people now granted it's not like you know world famous or anything like that i mean i'm nowhere near that kind of level i mean i am just me and there's like maybe a few people that will sort of like recognize it but this year i don't know just something about the way that some of you approach me whether i was on the dice tower booth or playing a game with you or just chatting wandering the halls where some of you just approached me and said like you know hi how's it going like your stuff you know, what games have you seen, you know, you know, how are you finding it, 
you know, love to see you do more stuff. And it, and it was just, some of it was heartwarming. Really, really heartwarming. I can't thank you guys enough who came up and just said hi, gave me a hug. You know, there weren't so many hugs this time around. I, you know, I'll, I'll give people hugs. But it was just great to chat to you all. And there were some people like going fanboyish as well. I mean, I remember Suzanne talking to me saying that, oh yeah, while you weren't here, somebody was going like, oh yeah, have you seen this guy or something? You know, he works with you a lot. And it's like, that should be the other way around. Okay, people should be talking to me going fanboy over Dice Tower people. You know, all the other people that I was helping with. Not me, <laughs> of all the people, not me. But it was just funny to hear it. But even then, just people who came by the booth when I was on it and just wanted to say hi, some wanted photos, just to shake a hand and just talk. Honestly, you guys made it out like a much more pleasurable experience than it already was. And as I say, seeing you guys up close, getting the feedback from you, you know, what you like, what you don't like in that is just rewarding. It's a good confidence boost. You know, it makes me realize that, you know, despite the fact that it is still a small time show, it's nowhere near like the famous like level I'd love it to be, it's still touching the hearts and some, you know, brain cells of a few people out there who enjoy watching the content, whether it's because they gel with me on games or whether they just like to see me go off on a weird you know excessive enjoyable tangent or whether they just like to see me rant like angry joe or whatever about uh you know games i don't like but it was great to see you thank you honestly you see me at a convention just come up and say hi i love to talk to you guys so yes thank you so much so yeah as you can see with the pictures earlier I brought quite a lot of games back. Um, <laughs> quite a few. Uh, I mean, I am staring at a ton of them on the table now. There's some out there that I had to get rid of off the table, so I could actually put the camera in here. And there's a few in my game bag. I've literally just got back from Dice Portsmouth because I was at my gaming club night. And I'm having to squeeze these videos in quite heavily this week, okay? Because I've got a lot of stuff to get on with. And I've got stuff that I'm overdue for. I mean, I've got to get a uh, preview done of Subterra 2 for in time for their Kickstarter to finish. I've got a couple of things from Asmodee, the uh, deluxe expansion for Arkham Horror LCG. And there was one other Arkham Horror related one. I'm positive I was looking at. I just can't remember what it was. Uh, what was it? I can't remember. This is the thing. There's just so much to do. But I've got all those games to look at. And I've been playtesting some tonight. I've done the uh, Geometric Art uh, from Empress 4. I have done uh, the Ticket to Ride Japan expansion. Not Italy. I've just played Japan. And I've played uh, Detective Club, uh, you know, which I got from Black Rock Games while I was at Essen. And strangely enough, I got a French copy. But thankfully, you can print the rules online. It's pretty simple to learn. And those games have been pretty solid so far. I mean, Geometric Art is fun and quirky, very light, little silly game, you know, about drawing with weird shapes and that. Nice enough, does the job. Uh, Ticket to Ride is always a good game, and the Japan expansion is so far uh, quite tight, um, but also quite quick. You only have 20 trains because you've got those bullet trains that you're building, which don't get you points. But if you don't contribute enough to them, then you might lose out on points at the end game. It's a really cool looking map. And Detective Club, definitely the highlight of tonight. I nearly, I was falling out of my chair laughing with that game. It's like Spyfall Dixit, where, you know, you've got that one person who doesn't know what the clue word is, and everyone's trying to describe by way of these Dixit style cards how the clue word relates to them and the stuff that people come out with, you know, the cards that come down. It is just a fantastic party game from the two plays that I was doing it at the club tonight. Honestly, cannot wait to get it to the table again. So in terms of highlights so far from Essen, yeah, Detective Club is definitely one you want to check out. I mean, it is in, it could parry, I don't know where they are. Oh, it's right behind me. It could very well kill Spyfall out of my collection. That's how good it is. All right, so, uh, you know, look out for a review on that one at some point once I've given it more plays. But I'm just looking at my table now. I've got Expedition to Newdale. I've got to Runestones. And not all of these I'm reviewing, okay? Not all of them. Not all of them are review copies. So uh, I am going to have to cherry pick a few of these. But, uh, I mean, ones that I bought for personal use. Uh, the Pursuit of Happiness Experience expansion, I bought that. Uh, Detective City of Angels, I bought that one. I didn't go on the Kickstarter, but I decided to like, impulse buy, the, impulse bought the game there. Not to review. I mean, it will take me far too long to get through it and review it. I mean, maybe I'll do a review in the long run, but I'm not rushing to get it out. Uh, Sukiyumi Full Moon Down, I don't even know if I even get a chance to play that one. It just looked interesting. 
Um, I've got the Empires of the North Japanese Islands. I've got the Dale of Merchants collection. Uh, probably not going to review that one. It's an old game. But, uh, you know, Dale of Merchants is a fantastic little deck builder. Um, I do, however, have some games that I am going to be reviewing, though. And uh, such... Well, I may review Crystal Palace. I don't know. I literally bought that one purely because my um, uh, buddy Chewy uh, from... Uh, the UK Facebook group. Um, he arranged a really cool meetup for us, actually. It was a good night out eating food and that. But he recommended a game to me called Crystal Palace. It was at Furland, I think, that booth. They tend to sell out of their games. There was an English copy there. And I thought, why not? Take a recommendation. And I bought it. I have no idea if I'll like it or not. But dice placement and a few other mechanics in it sound pretty good. So uh, I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll review that one. Uh, but I am definitely going to be reviewing Warp Gate. Uh, the Wolf Designer uh, kindly showed me how the game works and gave me a review copy of that. It looks interesting. Uh, Blackrock Games have given me Faron, uh, Faron, however it is. I will do that. It's a Wonderful World and uh, Detective Club, as I already mentioned. So I will be reviewing those three. Uh, what else? Looking at the table. Um, I wasn't going to review it. I probably won't review it. Or maybe I'll do it as an anthology. But I wasn't planning to review the Ticket to Ride Japan and Italy one. But... If I can fit it into an anthology, I will. Same goes for New Discoveries Underwater Cities. I've got the expansion to that. However, I do have Expedition to Newdale, which I will be reviewing. Possibly Bushido from Grey Fox Games. Uh, uh, Code 777 and Winner's Circle. These two really nice looking ones that have come out from... Who are they again? Uh, sorry. Uh, Dice Tree Games. Sorry, I had to reread the uh, logo there. I couldn't quite see it. But they reprint older games in a really nice blinged up fashion. They had Modern Art, which is not a game I'm a huge fan of. But they had Code 777, which I've never played. Looked pretty cool. And Winner's Circle, which I have played, which is a cool racing game. But both of them looked gorgeous on the tables. I, I, you know, I got some discounted copies from them. What can I see out there? Rune Stones? Not planning to review that one. I just bought that because the... Uh, the concept sounded interesting, and my friend Russell works uh, with Queen Games at conventions, and he just recommended it to me, so I thought I'd grab it. Uh, let's see what else I can't see because of the lights. Terra Mara. Ah, yes, Terra Mara. That was a heavy game from Quinted Games that I played three rounds as a demo and thought, this has got potential to be a really, really good heavy game. So I went and grabbed that one. Uh, I have also got down there. I really can't see with the light, which is really annoying. Uh, uh, yes, uh, The Magnificent uh, from Porto Games. I will be reviewing that one as well as Trails of Tucana, the Roll and Write. That was in the bag. Haven't had a chance to play that one yet, but it looks pretty cool. It looks like it will actually make me care about what the other players are doing, which is more than I can say for most of the stuff. What else is there? Uh, Reavers of Midgard. Yes, um, probably not reviewing that one because I bought that one out of my own pocket, but... Uh, yeah, it was quite a big box, wasn't it? Uh, let's see, I've got Palin's The West Kingdom and Western Legends anti Art. They weren't planning to be reviewed because they've kind of been done to death already. Not to mention I got those on Kickstarter. But, I don't know, popular request, I might do Paladins, all right? What else have we got over there? Oh, yes, from uh, Capstone Games, we have got Myra, Myra, Mara Kyber, whatever it's called, the new Alexander Fister game. I might enjoy it, I don't know, but this was definitely by popular demand. I mean, you guys were asking me, like, oh, have you played this one yet? Have you played this one yet? And it's like, you know my history with this designer, right, when it comes to his heavier games. But, uh, you know, I'll give it a shot. Looked interesting from the rulebook, anyway. And also uh, Cooper's Island. That looked very interesting, actually, when it was on the table. I couldn't get into a demo of either of those, though, because... Well, we'll get onto that in a minute. But, yes, couldn't get onto the demos of that one. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the table. Not all going to get reviewed, but... You know, the stuff that I've promised the publishers I will review, I need to get done. You know, there's plenty of stuff to do. And that's not even including the ones in the bag that I already just mentioned, like Detective Club and Ticket to Ride and Charles of Tucana and Geometric Art and Walking in Province. Oh my God, so many games. I mean, this is a fun time of year to me, but the lead up from Essen to Christmas is a hard one because I have to review so many games before Christmas as well as do top 10s and stuff. And so you're pretty much going to see a focus on that for the next two months you know, and spacing it out. You know, I need to get top 10 hidden gems done at some point. I need to do top 10 retrospective 2018. And then obviously top 10 in 2019, particularly after I've played a lot of these games so they can be contenders. There's a lot. There is a lot. But it's fun. Uh, oh yeah. And oh yeah, what's uh, what's coming in the post? Uh, Tapestry is coming out this weekend. So I'm getting that one. And uh, I've got review copies of 
uh, Final Hour and uh, Marvel Champions coming through, which I did get to play, actually. Marvel Champions was really good. I mean, I I won't play it again with three or four players. It just takes too long with the downtime, but one or two players, I mean, it's going to be a great solo game for me. I even don't know what I'm going to do with my Marvel Legendary at this point. You know, it was that good. You know, I mean, yep, another money sink. Lord of the Rings, Arkham Horror, now Marvel Champions. Great! All my money's gone down the drain. But, yeah, all good. And what else was there? Ah, oh, yes, and the Suburbia Cut Super Edition. Yes, I got that on Kickstarter. I picked it up. Oh, it's a nice box. It's so nice. I mean, you might have seen me on Twitter, like, doing the, uh, poke, like, poking around it and taking a look. It took me a long time to punch that out, but, uh... I cannot wait to get that Suburbia version to the game. I've unpacked it. I've unboxed it with all the game trays and recessed burrs and that. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Suburbia now looks pretty. <laughs> Not something you say often. So the convention itself, 209,000 people that was recorded for it. I mean, that's a, quite a lot. It was about 190 last time and it was noticeable. You know, Sunday was still relatively quiet-ish. Uh, Thursday and Friday were the, still the quieter days, and Saturday was still like, oh my god, you know, people everywhere. But Thursday didn't feel like it was as quiet as it usually is. I think people have started to get wise that Thursday is the quieter day, and are now trying to shuffle to it, which obviously is bringing numbers down from other days, and then bringing other ones up on Thursday. But still, comparatively, Thursday and Friday is still your best days to go to this convention, then Sunday, then Saturday. If you don't think you're going to need all four days at the convention, then Saturday is the day you skip, okay? Go out, go see Essen, go visit Berlin or something, go do something else in Germany, because it's going to get rammed, and I know a couple of people from other blogs and that, and some friends of mine who who I met there, and I know that they're not good with crowds, I know they're not good with the heat and the noise, and if that sort of thing bothers you, Saturday might be worth avoiding for the convention. You know, certainly, I pretty much just want to work on the Dice Tower booth for most of Saturday, because I don't want to have to try and clamber around all these halls. I mean, good luck trying to navigate Hall 3 in 1 when it's Saturday. It's a bit of a nightmare. But, uh, yeah, convention, <clears throat> really good. Got into a lot of demos, met a lot of publishers, got some business cards out. The shirt, got a lot of good feedback from people who I knew who hadn't seen the vlog uh, session on it. But I'm glad to see that this is getting, you know, good feedback. You know, it, I was expecting such a backlash. But no, it's good. The shirts came in handy the whole week. I mean, they, they're wickable. I didn't feel too hot while I was in Essen, you know. And they just work really well. And they're doing nicely for the club and these videos. So, uh... That was a purchase well made. And certainly there is going to be some work done on banners and the award signatures. You would have seen that on Twitter lately and on polls. I'm hopefully going to get in contact with the same studio who did the original logo. And we'll start working from there. Hopefully in time for some of these reviews that are coming out. But I do not guarantee anything because this stuff takes time as well as money. So, in terms of Essen itself, generally, really cool convention. I thought it was well run. I thought that it was easier to get in in the morning via press pass or exhibitor pass and that. I like the um, the preview stuff. I went to the press conference. Uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> so, because uh, not that the press conference doesn't have interesting stuff in it. I mean, it had a couple of awards and some interesting history about Essen, but uh, it was in German. Yeah, kind of should have thought about that, really. <laughs> so, you know, I was already having problems going around Rotterdam the day before as a, a little city break on Tuesday. And by the way, Rotterdam, pretty city. I love your architecture there. I mean, seriously, you know, some of those buildings and shots I got on a photo and my camera phone were gorgeous. Rotterdam was nice. And I forget what the name is, but what's that horseshoe-like building with the murals in the inside? Not only did that look beautiful, but the food courts there, you could have just given me £500 and I would have just eaten there all day. All the lovely food. But anyway, that's the side thing. But uh, yeah, the preview event, all in German. Yeah, I'd already got through listening to lots of Dutch and suddenly I had to try and interpret German. Didn't really work out. So I'm not going to be doing that again next year. But the new releases uh, show was pretty interesting. I mean, you got to go around a few of the stalls and literally just see the game laid out, get an explanation, and that was about it. It doesn't reveal a ton, but it did alienate a few games where I'm like, yeah, I no longer care about that one anymore, or I don't feel like this one anymore. But it also added one or two where I'm like, oh, I didn't see that one. Okay, let me consider that a bit more. It was a good way of like a last minute tweak of my list of what games I wanted to see. And then also meeting people. The SM preview night was decent. It allowed me to get some, you know, kind of plays of certain games like Nova Lunar and Marvel Champions and Walking in Province ahead of time before I demoed them. 
but it had flaws. I mean, firstly, we had to pay to get into it, even as press, you know, 35 euro ticket, which for a few hours of gaming is not ideal price, but oh well. But I heard that they were charging publishers not only to put their games in the library, but also to put people down there to demo, which means a lot of publishers got priced out of it. Not a good way to do things. And this hurt the event because there were very few demo people. I mean, I was lucky to get into a game of Marvel Champions where somebody was demoing it, and a game of Obscurio where someone was demoing it. But a lot of the games were in the library were just in the library. You had to self-teach yourself a lot of these games. That's fine when it's a filler game of 30 minutes, but when it's an hour and a half game or longer, like some of the heavy titles that are in there, that's insane. You know, these games are brand new. I want to have someone teach me the game. I don't want to have to self-teach it when I'm at a convention. And this goes on to, I mean, the, the night itself was fine, but yeah, it could have been better and I hope Essen improve on it. But this carried over into the convention as well because there were a few things that I was seeing from demoers and some publishers, I'm not going to name names, but these are things you kind of need to improve on. Firstly, watch the space in your booth. You, you might think, oh yeah, I can have all these tables in here. We can have all these demos going on at the same time. Yeah, I'm not the thinnest person in the world, okay? And there are people out there who are probably bigger than I am. <laughs> you know, who are bigger than I am. You know, the gaming community is not well known for its exercise habits, okay? But, you know, if your booth is basically so crammed in with tables that it's impossible to get between them, and there was a couple of booths in particular that were horrible for this. Like, you literally, we were like compressed down trying to let people in because of bags and that. People have bags. People are fairly large sometimes. And, you know, you need space. They could have easily wiped out a table and spaced out the tables a bit more and it would have been a lot better. But yeah, don't try to squeeze in as many tables as you can in a tight space just to get more games laid out because trust me, it was annoying, all right? And a lot of people were getting irked off about that. Secondly, if you're going to show de um, games on there, demo them. No self-teaching, okay? Seriously. There were some heavy games being like self-taught there. And it's hard enough if you're English and try to do it. But if you're the if you're German and trying to interpret like English rules and stuff, it's quite difficult. And one thing I am happy to do in a demo is play a few rounds and quit. We did it with Expedition of New Dale. You know, we played half a game and I was good. I understood the game, I knew the mechanics, and I thought this is good, I want to get it. But there were a lot of people there. You know, there were a lot of German players there, but there was a lot of publishers who were, like, in, you know, allowing this to happen, where a heavy game gets played from start to finish. No! If your game is 90 to 90 minutes to 2 hours or more, then don't have them play the entire game. Have them play a few rounds, because other people want to play your game. It irks me when I see that, you know, and there were some games I just could not get into a demo. Because you had to be there at that perfect time. And if you weren't, then you'd have to wait an hour and a half before you got into a game, which you're obviously wasting time at the convention to do that. And then most of the time you'd get there and it's like one German person sits there and has reserved the table for her and her three friends who are all German, which means you can't get into it either. Like I say, not really a bash on the Germans on that one, because frankly, we should be ashamed for the fact that we can't speak our own language, let alone your language. You know, at least at least you guys are able to speak not only German, but sometimes Dutch and also English. You know, you can speak a lot better than we can. And I always have to apologize every time I jump into a game to go, I'm sorry, I'm only English. Is that OK? And thankfully, you're all really nice about it. So, you know, whatever. But like I say, come on, publishers, you've got to demo games properly. Uh, any other problems or so? Nah, I mean, for the most part, I think publishers did quite well. Some like Bombix and Renegade were hit pretty hard because of uh, customs. I'm sure you customs, you ruin publishers' business. But yeah, they was customs were just like holding on to their stock, you know, what they get, and the Bombix couldn't get any of their stock to the convention. Renegade got half of their stock, I think, but not all of it. And it was just a nightmare for some publishers not being able to do that. Um, I heard that there was a theft with Empress 4. That made me feel sad because. You know, come on, guys. We're here to enjoy games, people. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that the thieves are not there for games. They're purely just there because they know there's a ton of cash sitting around. You know, they don't care about board games. Shame on you guys, honestly. You know, um, 
yeah, it, it pains my heart when I do see that some publishers have been hit by theft. And I feel sorry for Emperor S4. I hope it didn't hurt your business too much. And I mean, I can't imagine how it must feel to do a day of good business and have it ruined by some jerk who steals your cash box or something. I mean, people have got to be... You know, there were some security concerns I had with some of the stuff out there. I mean, there were publishers that just had like pyramids of games, you know, just laid out in the middle of a floor. And it's like, you better hope someone's keeping an eye on that pyramid because it's not difficult for somebody to waltz off of the game if you're not careful. It is... You know, you got to be careful with the security risk. And obviously, when it comes to cash boxes, get them out of the way. Keep them locked up. Keep them somewhere where no one else can see it. You know, you really need to be secure with these things. But like I say, that's some basic common sense advice, really. So, what else was I like? Uh, I mean, the convention itself was great. I was on the Dice Tower booth for a fair while. And I, you know... We got to meet a lot of you great people there, and you came to the booth and said hi. We had a booth next to Raf Skellers, so we had this cool enclosure, which was a lot bigger than previous years, so it just made it a fun experience to do. I didn't see as much food there that I could have picked out on, although somebody did buy those, uh, oh, I forget what they are, they're like little brown uh, dome-shaped biscuits or something, they're a bit like biscotti, um, but when I see a bag of them, it's like, it's literally, I can't stop eating the things, they're so good. But yeah, I just hung around, sold some promos, you know, chatting with the Dice Tower team, chatting with you guys, stroked a Dice Panda for far too long. In fact, where is he? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go get him. One second. I'm going to go fetch him. Where is he? Oh, come here. Over here. Oh, come on. Aha! Yes. <laughs> I was spending all my time stroking one of these things, so I decided to buy one from the Dice Tower. And it was just like, yes. Yes. We will not tolerate failure, Mr. Bond. No, no, we don't gnaw on our kitty. Leave me, no, leave mini Mr. Bigglesworth alone. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a very addictive stress toy. But yeah, I just had to buy one of these. So yeah, Takinoko Panda, and now I got a Dice Panda as well. Go figure. Nah, I'm not going to throw them. I'm going to pop them down there. Probably stroke them from time to time. But yeah, so... You know, that on top of things was always enjoyable. The evenings were great. I mean, Paul Grogan had a meetup on uh, the Thursday night. That was good fun to do. Uh, chatting with a few people there, like um, uh, Slicker Drips and a couple of other bloggers as well. And uh, Friday was Chewy, as I said. He did a Facebook meetup for people from the Facebook group, uh, UK Facebook group. And that was good fun. That was a good night. Uh, Saturday, I spent some... I could have, actually. <laughs> if Tom had responded to my message quicker, I would have actually possibly been at Dyson Mystics event. Sadly, I, you know, I didn't think I could get in. Apparently, I could have done, but, you know, it was no big deal. I met up with uh, Board Game Ramblings and uh, Johannes and his uh, lovely missus, and we played a few games. Uh, we tried out a few. Granted, they were mostly duds, but we tried out a few games. We had a good laugh, and it was a nice evening just at a Holiday Inn nearby. Um, and then Sunday, obviously, I had to come home, overnight ferry, morning drive, and I was exhausted. And speaking of driving, I am so glad I was driving. I mean, it was so nice to be able to just grab a bunch of games and shove them in a car boot during the event when it got too heavy. I mean, and it just made things convenient in the evening. So I just basically dumped everything in the car, walked off to whatever pub or something I needed for the event, then just walked back to the car, drive 20 minutes outside of Essen, get in, go to bed. You know, granted, you got to make that little drive, but it's worth it. The convenience is so worth it. Oh, so much better than public transport. So I'm um, definitely, well, I mean, I had to get an overnight ferry, but that was, at least that went smoothly. So yeah, I'm driving every year. I mean, whether I drive Eurotunnel or overnight ferry or other car ferry, I don't know. I'll have to see what's a cheaper alternative, but I've already booked next year's accommodation and I'm going to drive because it was just so good. And driving in Europe was interesting. <laughs> it's the first time I'd ever driven in Europe. And it took a little bit. I mean, around the Hook of Holland, it was like first thing in the morning. I decided to just randomly drive around the Hook of Holland for about 15 minutes just to get used to the road system there. Didn't take too long. And I started to get the hang of the main A roads. So it's like, okay, got to think right. And then we're turning left that way. Now we got to go right. Look for the signposts. Look for the arrows. And you, you're a pretty good signpost around there, I must admit. Uh, Rotterdam was a little scary <laughs> when I first like drove into a city. But... Got the hang of it eventually. I mean, only one uh, slight wrong turn. I think I might have gone the wrong way up one street, but uh, thankfully nobody uh, honked me for it. But uh, yeah, you know, it, eventually I got used to driving over there. Now, if you plunk me in Europe, I could drive in Europe, no problem. It just literally just took a little bit of a small adjustment period and then it was almost second nature. If anything, it was harder to switch back to the British system once I got back. 
And yeah, to be honest, like I say, we drive on the wrong side of the road because everywhere else drives on the right pretty much and we just happen to be one of the few odd ones out. So, you know, I got used to it and driving in Europe was fine. Interesting different drivers though. <laughs> I mean, a few observations. Firstly, Holland. You have got some nice scenery in Holland. You really have in the Netherlands and that kind of area. And secondly, your roads are silky smooth. What on earth have you done with your roads over there? Because I'm, I'm driving in a Suzuki Swift Sport with like a light load on the way there and a heavy load on the way back. And it doesn't matter what speed I am, but your roads are like driving over silk. It's so silky smooth. I've never been so comfortable on a ride in my life. Um, but, you know, some good scenery as well. But on the motorways, and particularly in Germany, but certainly in the Netherlands as well, you've got the different kilometers an hour, which is a bit weird to look at on my speedometer, which I'm used to miles an hour. But you get like 100 kilometers an hour, 120, 130, 80, whatever. It, a speed limit's... Speed limits in Britain are kind of like, you know, some people ignore them a lot, but they get enforced quite heavily, you know, annoying cameras and stuff like that, and I've been caught speeding before. But what is it with the speed limits in Germany and Netherlands? Because it's a bit like the Pirates Code from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's like, more like guidelines, <laughs> you, know, I, you know. I'll go like, okay, I'm at 120, this is still pretty good, you know, good petrol coming, vroom, 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 what, and then? It's like, tons of people are going miles faster than the limits. I don't know if you guys have got cameras over there that are hidden, but maybe not. Maybe that's the reason. But yeah, barely saw any police cars, you know, apart from one or two. And I think everybody just literally ignores the speed limit and the length for tailgating. Seriously, cut that out. But, you know, getting tailgated a lot when I was going at the speed limit. But I was, you know, I wasn't speeding while I was over there because, let's face it, I was new to driving in Europe. I didn't want to mess around with any police officers while I was there. I didn't even know if my uh, LEN converters or whatever they were, the light converters, the dimmer, the things that um, block the rays from the opposite side of the road, I forget what they're called, but I put them on. I have no idea if they were working or not, but nobody pulled me over, nobody flashed me, so I'm assuming they were good. But yeah, it was just, it was an interesting experience to drive in Europe, but I'm confident I could do it again without too much difficulty. So, is there anything else I can think of? Not really, no. I mean, I... I mean, first impressions of some of the demos I played. I enjoyed Expedition to New Dale. I think that's got potential to be a good midway uh, Fister game. Um, uh, the I've already mentioned a lot of games that I've played. Uh, obviously, Dale of Merchants, the collection box, looks really cool. Suburbia is obviously a very good game. Um, I've tried, as I mentioned, Geometric Art and Detective Club and uh, Walking in Province I've already played. All of them are pretty cool games. You know, there's a lot to get through. You know, a lot to get through. In terms of my highlights, Terra Mara would probably be my highlight for the heaviest game there. Abyss Conspiracy was fantastic. A 20-minute filler game, which looks gorgeous. Simple to play, but interesting choices. It's a shame I couldn't buy it there, but that is definitely my highlight for a small, tiny game. Uh, Terra Mara, definitely the highlight for the heavy game. Midweight. Expedition of New Dale was pretty good, I have to admit. Um, wasn't as bowled over by Glenmore 2 Chronicles. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was any other mid-weight game I played. Uh, well, Skytopia and Aquatica from Cosmodrome Games, very, very good. I didn't acquire them at the time. I'm hoping to get them as review copies later. But uh, yeah, those were definitely some highlights. Keep an eye out on Cosmodrome Games. I think they're going places. Uh, what else was there? There must have been more games than that. Chai. Chai from Steeped Games. That was an interesting little light filler about uh, built like making tea. It's a insanely overproduced for what it is you know it's a very light fluffy filler but uh you know overproduced is not always a bad thing it just makes the game a bit pricey and it was just a nice zen like game of getting tea ingredients and making tea so i didn't mind it and i liked how they did their own artwork and stuff he's basically like a ryan lockett so uh you know i like it when some publishers are kind of like their own designer their own publisher their own artist that kind of thing it shows a lot of talent but uh yeah there's a lot of stuff I got played, uh, not as many demos as I normally would like, because, I mean, I've got to do talking and, you know, discussing with publishers and obviously go buy stuff. I had some meetings. I had a live stream with Asthma Day. Um, I was on their Twitch channel for half an hour on the Friday evening. Um, I was in a, like, literally doing a turn of Black Angel with some of the Asthma Day live team, and uh, I'm trying to... I was trying to basically stare at the camera 
while also not trying to focus on the hostess, <laughs> who I kind of had a bit of a crush on. But uh, yeah, so it, it was a good experience to do live streaming, because I've never done it before. I don't have the setup here to do it. I wish I could, but I just don't. Uh, and so to be on a live stream was um, different, but I would happily do it again. I got comfortable with it pretty quickly, and would happily go on another live stream if Asmodee wants me to do anything like that, or if any other blogger wants me to do that, I'll happily join, uh, join you on the live stream. But uh, yeah, that was an interesting 30 minutes. It was kind of done for me as a favor from my contact at Asmodee UK. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I would do it again. So maybe some of you saw me on Twitch. I don't know. Nobody's mentioned it. So probably not. But uh, yeah, I think that's all I can do because my throat is going and I need to get to bed. So uh, yeah, Essen 2019. Great experience. A lot of cool games. A ton of stuff to review. You know, it's always a mad shopping spree. Great experience driving in Europe, great experience drinking and eating German food and Dutch food. Rotterdam was beautiful. Seeing you guys out there was great. Thank you for coming up and saying hi. Seeing the Dice Tower a lot. You know, um, future conventions. I've got StabCon this weekend. If you're there, you know, you can join me in Southampton. I'm going to GridCon, uh, Paul Grogan's thing, later this month. Two or three days. I don't know yet. Depends how far I get at work. But I'm um, hoping to go for the three days. Um, there's Handycon in January, I'll be there for that. Uh, the lovely ladies, the lovely beautiful ladies at Portal um, were asking me if I could come back to PortalCon again in late January for a day. If Ignacity wants me back, I'll join them at PortalCon, so that'll be cool. And after that, it's Aircon in March, then UK Games Expo in May, and yeah. Oy, the life of a blogger. If only I could do this full time, eh? That's a pipe dream. <laughs> you know, check out for that Kickstarter. Yeah, right. But, you know, one can pray. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple video. With whatever review that might be. <laughs> There's a lot I gotta get done. So until then, I'll see you soon. Thanks for catching me at Essen. And if you couldn't go to Essen, then that's fine. It's an expensive trip. But hopefully one day you'll get to go. But for now, I'm gonna sign off. And I'll see you guys in Essen 2020. Remember, as always, it's only a game, and I'll see you soon.